I've been talking a lot about time code synchronization lately, and I've been asked to make a tutorial about Premiere Pro and how to use time code synchronization there. Now, this is exactly that video. If you're wondering what is time code synchronization, why does it even matter, and what would you use it for, a short break here is that it is for filmmakers, if you are using multiple cameras and audio recorders, to be able to synchronize those together back in the post-processing so that you don't have to do all of the aligning yourself manually. However, I also have more videos and a more in-depth description about this process with different tools and techniques linked in the description below. There's a full playlist of videos. Now, when we talk about timecode synchronization in Premiere Pro, we actually run into a very specific problem, and I hope that would be fixed at some point in the future. Right now, timecode synchronization in Premiere Pro is supported if you have the metadata timecode already written into the files. Now, that might not be a problem if you are using high-end cameras that are actually able to write metadata and timecode information into the video and audio files that you are creating. However, when you're, for example, using devices like the Tentacle Sync to timecode enable a DSLR or mirrorless camera, you are probably going to be recording audio timecode, and that is currently not supported by Premiere Pro. There's a workaround how you can still achieve the same synchronization by using the free DaVinci Resolve program. And I'm going to show you both of these processes right here in this video. Once where you just take synchronized files that all have the metadata synced, then to synchronize that onto the timeline and use that in a multi-track sequence or a multi-cam sequence. And then also how you can work around this if you have a file that has audio timecode, but you just want to use that inside of Premiere Pro to also be able to have a synchronized timeline. First up, I would say we take a look at the synchronization of files that all have the metadata timecode information. Right here, we have the original folder, which has the EOS R camera recordings, and those have audio timecode. And then down here, these all have metadata timecode. Now, if I would bring those over into Premiere Pro, it would be no problem to synchronize the ones with metadata, but the ones without, those would not be really syncable. However, I have already changed these to attach timecode information into the metadata based on the audio timecode with the tool Tentacle Sync Studio. For now, we are going to use the ones that have the metadata attached and drag and drop these just into Premiere Pro. Then we can actually just simply select all of them, right click, and say create multi-camera source sequence. There we are going to be asked a couple of things like which synchronization point, I would say timecode is a good start, automatic, move source, camera one, and so on. Just hit OK. And now we have a multi-camera sequence and I can hit right click and say open in timeline monitor or timeline view. And with that, you can see we have all of these on different tracks. Now that's actually because the system actually puts every single clip onto its own track. If you don't want that, for example, when you have one camera that continuously starts and stopped recording and was moved around in between, for example, you will want to have those things on one track. Like in this case, for example, the iPhone tracks are all on separate tracks. So this is three tracks, but it could also just be all put onto one track. Now, to put the clips of the same devices into their own tracks, we have to metadata tag those. So we want to have the metadata window open right here. And there you want to go in here and go to metadata display, search for camera angle or camera label, and I'm going to just enable the dynamic media camera label. Hit OK there. And if you want to have this available in your media browser, you can also right click on the top bar here, metadata display, and search for camera angle or label. We're going to use the camera label in this case, and then you can go all the way to the back and bring this to the front here, for example. And if you have just a single clip, then you can just put something in here. Let's say we put A for first camera, and then we have the B here and the B here. However, if you have multiple clips, so like here for the three clips, for example, it might not make sense because you can't edit this in this view right here. Then you want to go into the metadata area and you can search for camera label. And down here you will see there you can actually put your letter or whatever you want to use. Then we have these audio tracks and we want to go with X for this one. And then we have, for example, Y or Z there. And then the last one, we're going to put the Y. 
And now when we go in right click, create multi-camera sequence, we want to create a single multi-cam source sequence and we want to label the cameras based on their camera label. So with that now, we can actually just simply hit the OK button and again, right click, open in timeline view. And now you can see that the iPhone tracks are all on their own track and the EOS R2 are all on their own track and the same thing for the two laviers that I had running right here. And now it's probably time to simply go in and remove all the tracks that are not needed. In this case, for example, I could just delete the audio from all the different cameras and just use the audio recorded with the F6 and those Tentacle Track E audio recorders. And now with all that synchronized, we can simply right click on the multi-track sequence and go to new sequence from clip. And there we will actually get our multi-track sequence. And if we go here, now you can edit the multi-cam sequence by hitting this little button right there. And if you don't have that, you can go to the plus sign right there and then drag that into the menu like so. But then you can activate the multi-cam sequence view and just watch this video. And as you can see, then the different camera angles will become visible for you. And you can set up keyboard shortcuts so that you can actually just switch between these and then you would have those cuts made into your multi-cam sequence. Personally, I actually like to use just simply making a new sequence. And with that, just dragging and dropping that multi-cam sequence in here, keeping the existing settings. And now I actually have the tracks that I can work with and I can better see and understand what is going on there. However, the editing with the multi-cam sequence function is actually also something really useful if you, for example, do a long form interview podcast thing where you wanna switch between your cameras every now and then. But for those videos where I wanna have B-roll shots of me showcasing some product and stuff like that, I oftentimes find it easier to simply edit like this, disable the multi-cam mode, and just work with those files knowing what I have done and such things. Now that is how you can do this process if you have metadata in all of your files. However, what if you have the audio timecode in your file? And for that, we want to go out here and with this folder right here, we have the files that don't have a timecode information. These three files here don't have that information attached. However, what can we do? One thing we can do is use a program like Tentacle Sync Studio. And there is a tutorial about this specific program on my channel and you can export an XML timeline so that you can simply work with that in your Premiere Pro. This program is 150 bucks or free if you actually buy one of these devices from Tentacle Sync. What if you don't want to use that and maybe you have a free version of DaVinci Resolve but you like to edit better in Premiere Pro? Now, to actually achieve this, I would go in here, pull those files into DaVinci Resolve, because there you actually can have a setting that is for synchronizing the audio timecode. And with that, you can see we have timecode information here, but that's actually not accurate. If we right click here, go to update timecode from audio track, now everything is updated and ready to go. This is actually how it should be. Now, once more, we do the process for naming these angles. So in this case, we're going with the camera number and we go with A right there. Then we have the next one and call that B. Then apply. Then we have the iPhone tracks. We call them Z. And this is done in the metadata uh, area right here. And if you want to know how to get to the camera part exactly, go to the little arrow down there shots and scene, and then you have the camera number. We wanna save that. We have the audio recorders here. Let's call those X. And then we have the last one, or the second to last Y and Z. And there we go. Now we can right click all of these tracks and go to new multi-cam clip using this sequence or this clips. And there we can say we want to call this a simple multi-cam 24 frames per second based on time code. And we want to use the metadata camera as the angle name. And we want to use the metadata camera number as the track or the clips track number. And we can hit create. 
And now we have a multi-cam sequence ready to go. And I can actually also open this in timeline view so that you can see all of the different clips and tracks going on there. Now there's one specific issue that you get here, and that is that this multi-cam track or this multi-cam timeline actually cannot be exported as a timeline. It simply just doesn't work. I have no idea why exactly that is the case, but for some reason it is. Now, what I did to achieve the same result or basically be able to get the multi-cam track now exported into Premiere Pro was that I simply had to create a new timeline. In this case, these are all fine. Create. Now we have that. Open the multi-cam, multi-track timeline. Right-click, open in timeline. Selecting all the clips that are in here and then copying those. So right click and copy or command C, opening the other native timeline and right click and paste. Now all of these clips are in this timeline right here and this timeline you can actually right, uh, click on file, export, timeline and there you're going to be asked what format you want. Now I found that the version like the FCP7 XML version 5 works wonders to bring stuff over to Premiere Pro. So call that file whatever you want, save it. In this case, I'm going to save it to the desktop. And now I can go back into Premiere Pro and also maybe go back to the desktop here. Timeline 1 XML, drag and drop that into the manager or the file manager for Premiere Pro. And right here, we have all of the files and one timeline. And now we can double click onto that and as you can see, we have pretty much the same effect. But keep in mind, this is now with files that had audio timecode synchronization and metadata timecode synchronization. And right now, Premiere Pro does not support audio timecode synchronization like DaVinci Resolve does. So this workaround is kind of necessary. I will leave a link down in the description below so that you can vote up the feature request on Premiere Pro to also integrate audio timecode synchronization. That would be great so that we don't have to do any of those round trips or use external programs like the Tentacle Sync Studio, for example. Now, what you can also do, and that is a different way, is that now you actually have those clips with timecode metadata. However, you can't really just update that metadata in the files for some reason. However, what you can do is you can select the files and select all of them. And with that, go to Media Management and say you want to export these clips and you want to transcode them. And then you can, for example, transcode all of these files to Apple ProRes, which would be a great process anyways, because it makes editing your footage on your laptop easier, especially if you're using a Mac system. And then you can also resize the footage or just render at the source resolution. Now, this is something that, of course, takes longer because it has to basically create new video files and completely transcode everything. However, it then also includes the metadata timecode that you just stored there with the update of the audio timecode. And another thing here is that you, of course, only have to do this with files that had a audio timecode so that then you have the metadata timecode stored into the file. But this is one way of how you can read audio timecode from your files and then transcode those files with the new metadata attached as well. Now, this is my video about timecode synchronization in Premiere Pro CC as of 2021. If you have any questions around this topic, you can leave those in the comment section down below. And I'm going to try to answer you there or make a video specifically about your question. If this video was helpful, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you want to check out more videos, you can find links to a playlist full of timecode related videos in the description below. And there are also these two up here. And of course, have an amazing day, make it your life, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.